continuing Avery pretrial motion hearing August 2006 the court Mr. Beauty you may call your next witness Mr. Beauty I call Detective Remaker the clerk raise your right hand Detective Dave Remaker called as witness herein having been first duly sworn has examined and testified as follows the clerk please be seated please state your name spell your last name for the record the witness Dave Remaker R E M I K E R direct examination by attorney Buting and are you a detective is that correct yes how long have you been a police officer or in law enforcement about 13 years and how long have you been a detective I've been an investigator since January of 99 part of the part of that included narcotics and you are employed by whom Manitowoc County Sheriff's Department and on November 4th 5th in the time period of the last year were you also so employed yes and in your experience as a officer or detective with Manitowoc County Sheriff's Department have you had experience in applying for search warrants yes have you had training to do to do so as well depends on what part of the search warrant you were talking about I don't recall any specific training and references to applying for search warrants never had any training on how to prepare an affidavit in order to get a search warrant on the job or otherwise on the job of experience uh, that type of training okay uh, you do know though that you that when you prepare an application for a search warrant and in fact when you prepare an affidavit in support of that you must be truthful in the information that's provided definitely could you tell me when you first became involved in the Teresa Halbach matter I believe it was on Thursday that would have been November 3rd I believe and how did that come about I was paged I was requested to come into the, the Sheriff's Department I arrived there and met with some detectives from our department in Calumet County and you were asked to come in by who uh, was that by Lieutenant Link probably when you came in did you did you meet with Lieutenant Link uh, he was there yes as well as an investigator from Calumet Co uh, County Sheriff's Department investigator Dettering correct and at that time was it your understanding that you were being called in to assist with Calumet County matter or a Manitowoc County matter or which missing person but an investigating an investigation involving which department well the female that was missing was from Calumet County they had received some information that some of her last contacts included an address in Manitowoc County okay and did that address in fact turn out to be the Avery property in Manitowoc town of Gibson that was one of the locations yes okay and did you have an occasion to check with Stephen Avery on Thursday night November 3rd as to whether he had any information about the missing woman I did not someone from your department did correct and that would have been Sergeant Colburn you know did he go out to the property or was it by phone I believe he went out to the property and spoke with Stephen and maybe some additional people okay and the following day did you in fact have an opportunity to go out to the Avery property as well yes were you asked to do that or did you that do that on your own I was asked by it was Calumet County I believe one of the main contacts we had was with investigator Wigert okay and do you know what time it was you went out to the Avery property on the on the fourth 10 30 10 30 in the morning correct did you have a warrant at that time no and did you approach the trailer in which Stephen Avery resided in at one point yes do you know the address actual address of that 12932 Avery Road correct okay did you speak with other you were aware from your investigation that there are other people that live in that same general area or compound correct 
That was the first time I had ever been on the every property. Okay, I had no idea who lived out there. So at that time, you didn't know you were directed to go to a specific address. Correct. And that specific address related to the trailer resided in by Mr. Stephen Avery. I believe that's the information I, re I received. Yes. And when you drove out to the property, you had to turn right and go down sort of a dirt road to get to the end of the road before you reached that particular trailer. Isn't that right? I recall when we first got out there, I had no idea where to go. I wasn't sure where his trailer was. At one point, we went down that road that leads to Stephen, Stephen's trailer. Yes. And when you knocked on the door, was he there? No. Did you enter without him being there? No. After a period of time, did he arrive or did he come to you, come up to you? We attempted to make contact with that trailer, then we went to another trailer. That was the trailer that was decided by Bob Jonda. And then, when we were, there was no contact there, we started leaving. And we were driving down the road, and Stephen, and I believe Dolores arrived, and made contact with us. They were in a golf cart. When you say us and we, who are you referring to? Myself and Lieutenant Link. Lieutenant Link was actually out there with you? Yes. Okay, and so did you talk with Mr. Stephen Avery at that point? Yes. Do you explain to him that your purpose was in being there? Yes. And what was that? What did you tell him? I told him that we were investigating a missing female. He seemed a little surprised. I told... I explained to him that he had contact with Sergeant Coburn the night before, and then I asked if, we could, if I could search his trailer. Okay, and did he agree to that? Yes. Gave his consent freely. Freely. I appeared to cooperate fully? Yes. And so, then did you talk or walk back or drive back to the end of the road, uh, uh, road where his trailer was located? Yeah, he told me to go ahead and search. I told him I wanted him to come with me, and then we drove over to his trailer, and then he followed in the golf cart. So he was willing to let you just go into his trailer and let you search without him even being there. I believe so, yes. But you wanted him to be there. Correct. And when you walked into the trailer, did you look around through the complete trailer? Yes. And can you just briefly describe what the layout or what the layout of the trailer is uh, inside? Attorney Fallon, objection, relevance. The court, Mr. Buting. Attorney Buting, well, we're going to get it get to it eventually, so to make the record clear, I think it's helpful. The court, we may get to it eventually as, a, as part of the case, but I'm hoping that the testimony here will focus on the motion, on your motion. And I'm having trouble understanding the relevance of what he found in the trailer or what he observed in the trailer to the motion. Attorney Buting, well, we do have the burden to establish some standing, and so to make some of these questions need to go towards that. So I, uh, I can, the court. I'm not sure that I follow that. Attorney Buting, I can rephrase it. Continuing by Attorney Buting. When you went into the trailer, did it become clear to you that Mr. Stephen Avery did, in fact, reside in that trailer? Yes. Okay, and you had no reason to doubt that? No, he let us in. Okay, and you went inside and searched all of the rooms and opened up all the doors and closets at that time, right? Yes. Attorney Fallon, Your Honor, I'm going to renew my objection as to the relevance of this. Counsel is trying to lay foundational evidence for a standing argument, as I already argued last week, and in written pleadings, we do not challenge the fact that Mr. Avery has standing to, to challenge a search of his residence and, or garage. Our argument goes to everywhere else. Now, I'm not sure how this is questioning on November 4th is relevant to the events on November 5th. Mr. Buting, nevertheless, Judge, we do have a uh, make a record to establish standing, as Mr. Fallon has pointed out. And this is, this detective was there and can testify about Mr. Avery's standing to object to this warrant, which in, which included this particular trailer. That's what I'm trying, that's um, what I'm trying to establish. The court. 
I don't know that that's disputed. I think that's established already. I don't know how, what he found in various rooms relates to that. So I'm going to sustain the objection. Attorney Beauty, all right. Continuing by Attorney Beauty. In any event, you walked throughout through the trailer and then came out, right? Correct. Didn't find anything inside that gave you any reason to think that Teresa was there or had been there. I had no reason to believe that Teresa was there. Okay. And then did Stephen allow you to... Well, let me back up for a second. There's also a detached garage that's uh, near the particular trailer. Isn't that right? Yes. And it has a door in it. Correct. Actually, two doors. A service door and an overhead door. Correct. And those were those doors were open? I don't recall. Did, Stephen, did Steve allow you to go in and look into the garage as well? I didn't ask to go into the garage. I'm sorry. I didn't ask to go into the garage. Okay. And he didn't do anything to prevent you from going to the garage there. There wasn't any discussion about the garage. Did you look around to see if there was any evidence that her vehicle was on the property somewhere in that area? We may have looked as we were driving in and out. That's about it. Did you walk around any of the property to the side or back of the trailer? No. Did you see any burn barrels located nearby near the uh, Stephen Avery trailer? On the day of the consent search? Or before you actually filed the warrant? I know there's burn barrels out there from my contact out there. When exactly uh, seeing them, I don't know. Did it appear to you that the burn barrels you saw were in some way connected to the Stephen Avery trailer? That somehow there was some connection between them as opposed to anywhere else? Well, when I was out there on Saturday and Sunday and I seen the burn barrels, uh, at that point, obviously, I sensed that there was uh, sensed a connection between Stephen's house and the burn barrels, yes. And that's because of the property to the house, proximity to the house, or what? Yes. The burn barrels you're referring to were in, are we talking about one or two barrels, two, one or more barrels? I believe there's one, but just prior to you arriving at Stephen's trailer and on the right, right hand side of the driveway. Sort of in front, still, of the trailer? Correct. And did you, did you at any point see a burning a burn pit to the rear detached garage next to Mr. Avery's trailer. Are you still talking about that Friday or into Saturday, Sunday? What data are we talking about? They are quite different. For purposes of clarifying the record on this question, we conclude your subsequent Saturday and Sunday? Yes. Uh, yes, I've seen a burn, a burn pit back there. And did that burn pit appear to be uh, connected in any way to Stephen Avery's residence as opposed to any of the neighboring ones. It's right behind his garage. So your answer would be, yes, it is. Did you do anything else before you left the Avery property on November 4th? No. So you and Detective Link came together in, one, in the same vehicle? Correct. Now, the following day, Saturday, November 5th, were you working? Yes. Do you know what time you started? 8 a.m. Did you receive a call from Investigator Weigert that morning? Yes. Do you know what time? I would say between 8 a.m. and 10 a.m. And did, and that, I'm talking about the first conversation that you had with Investigator Weigert. Did you have a discussion about volunteer searchers? Yeah, he gave me some information about some volunteer searchers. And did Investigator Weigert tell you that there were numerous volunteer searchers who were coordinating their efforts to do some searches of their properties within Manitowoc County? Not those exact words, no. Have you reviewed anything prior to your testimony today? Yes. What was that? My report, um, recorded phone calls, um, recorded radio transmissions. And are those transcribed, those radio transmissions you're talking about? No. Did you bring those with you today? I did not. Where are, they, where are they located? At the Sheriff's Department. What radio transmissions are you referring to? 
has recorded conversations, phone conversations, between myself and investig Investigator Wiegert. And I also reviewed the radio traffic that I participated in. And uh, those recordings, are they, what day are they referring to? Saturday the 5th. So this is around the time of this phone call that we were talking about. Correct. And thereafter, as you are approaching the Avery property later. Yes. How many different recordings did you listen to? Phone calls or radio transmissions? Do you have do you have any tape recordings of the phone calls too? Yes. Which ones? There are a couple of conversations between myself and Investigator Wicker prior to me arriving at the Avery property. Uh, were those while you were located still at the Sheriff's Department or while you were on the road at the Sheriff's Department? And would you would that include your first conversation with it, Investigator Wigert that morning? I believe so. And so, approximately how many phone conversations did you have, or did you review before your testimony today, that concerned your conversations with Investigator Wigert? I believe there's two phone calls between myself and Investigator Wigert. And did both of those take place while you were still located at the station? Correct. And the radio transmissions that you're referring to that you reviewed, uh, were those the ones that took place after you had left the station? Correct. And included in what time period? From the time I left the south parking lot, south parking lot of the Sheriff's Department until uh, that time shortly after I confirmed the VIN number on the vehicle. And did those radio transmissions also include your conversations, in other words, statements you were making on the radio? Yes. I will get back to the recordings in a minute. But you also indicated that you reviewed your report. Yes. As part of your testimony today? Correct. And by your report, are we talking about a, a portion of, your, of a 22-page report prepared by the Manitowoc County Sheriff's Department? Yes. And that goes in sort of a sequential chronological time, uh, the way it's organized. For the most part, yes. And is that something you dictate? You're a part of it? Yes. And then it gets uh, transcribed by somebody? Correct. And then you review it? Yes. To make sure that it's accurate? Yes. And that's done shortly after the events that you are investigating, right? I can tell you that report was probably dictated about a week after the last day I was out there. Okay, now would you agree with me since you reviewed your report that any report uh, you state, quote, I, Detective Remaker, was working for at the MTSO, is that an abbreviation for Manitowoc County Sheriff's Department? Yes. At which time I received a phone call from CASO, Calumet, Sheriff's Department, right? Correct. Investigator Mark Wiegert. In Investigator Wiegert indicated that there were numerous volunteer searchers who were coordinating their efforts to do some searches, searches of properties within Manitowoc County. Does this sound, does this all sound familiar with what you reviewed? That's what my report says. Did you bring it with you today? Yes. You want to retrieve it quickly? Sure. I believe we're on page 4 of 22. Got it. Okay, and do you also go on to say in your report, quote, Wigert indicated that several ser searchers were willing to go with every property on every road to search the junkyards and salvage area. That's what it says. And does it also say, quote, Investigator Wigert stated, to, stated he and several of the volunteer search parties will be coming into the MTSO within the next hour to meet and coordinate efforts. Right? Correct. That's what your report says? Correct. And finally, Investigator Wigert requested my assistance for this follow-up. Close quote. Yes. That's what your report says, right? Yes. And is your report true and accurate? It's close. You try to make a complete and true report, I assume, right? Absolutely. And you always say, and when you say it's close, what, 
That's based upon what? Well, during my conversation with Investigator Wiegert, um, in the first conversation I had with him, he indicates that he says to me, just so you know, the family is doing their own thing uh, out there with searches. In case you get calls of trespassers, in case you get calls that there's people walking the ditches, the family is out doing their own thing. Uh, that was my first conversation with him. And this, this conversation that you're relating right now, is that based on, upon some independent recollection you have now of an event? That's based upon my review of the phone calls. That's based, but that's based on my review of the phone calls. That's based uh, on your view of the phone calls that you did repair for today's testimony. Yeah, I mean, some of the conversations I can recall, but I was able to, I guess, verify a little bit more once I reviewed that. Anything, anything else about your report, or is there uh, anything about your report that's not true? Well, I guess I misunderstood Investigator in which at some point I had thought that he was bringing some people to our department, some volunteers, volunteer searchers, to coordinate our efforts. That wasn't the case. Well, that is what you put in your report, though. Correct. So is your report not true on that? I would say that part is a little, yeah, a little, it's not quite accurate. Not quite accurate. That doesn't really cut it. My question is, did Wiegert say that several searchers were willing to go under the Avery property to search a junkyard salvage area? That part, uh, that part uh, were volunteer searchers out there. That's accurate. Another conversation that I had with Wiegert after that was, he calls me, he says, hey, we have a change of plans. I think we should uh, re-interview Stephen and, uh, and another individual. He also indicated that there were some volunteer searchers that were willing to go out and do some searches in different locations. And he, he had thought that we should meet up and talk about that and that it was possible that we would go and try and get con, uh, consent from the Avery's to do search in the salvage yard. That was the second conversation I had with him. And all this recollection that you're relating uh, to us now comes from your review of the phone calls. It's a little bit of both. As I, as I reviewed the phone calls, I remembered a couple, a couple more things, uh, an independent recollection of the exact date. Attorney Buting, Judge, at this time, I request we take a break. We have not had an opportunity, did not even know of such recordings, even though we have requested them. And I think at this point, we've got to take a break so that we can have an opportunity to re review those before I can complete my cross-examination of Detective Rimmaker. The court, Mr. Fallon. Attorney Fallon, we don't have any objection to that. Counsel and I were unaware of that Manitowoc County actually had recording uh, recordings of those, I believe. We had some information from Calumet County or things that they had recorded, and quite frankly, never dawned on us that they would have recordings of something 10 months old, so... The court, all right. Does anyone have any idea how long it's going to take to get these, get these together? The witness. I know they are in the process of getting it all together. There's a lot of information, a lot of recordings. I don't know where, where they are at. I believe they are, they are finishing up. Attorney Fallon, let me ask this, if I may judge. The court, go ahead. Uh, Attorney Fallon. Detective, is it possible, apparently there's a lot of radio traffic relative to that day, so let me ask this question. Is it possible to obtain, for instance, a recording of the telephone conversations you had with Investigator Wigert, and perhaps, uh, what would you say, gentlemen, the first hour of radio traffic, and then we can wait for the rest of it. It may not have any pertinence uh, at all to the balance of the motion. What do you think? If we just, is there any way we can just get like, the witness, probably have it to you within the hour. Attorney Fallon, within the hour. Continuing by Attorney Buting. Can I ask you this? Uh, when you reviewed them, were they on, did you just review them through some central system or were they on cassettes already or what? The individual that was collecting the information, doing the recordings, he had, 
I had requested that I be able to listen to a few things, and he had centralized or itemized those specific ones. And I think they're all on some hard drive, some main database within the, the department. When you listen to them, you had headphones plugged into something or what? No, they were just right on his comp on the computer. Okay, is that right next door? Correct. The court. Well, let me ask this: What are the other witnesses? What uh, that the other parties that the parties uh, anticipate calling with respect to this motion? Does the defense have any further witnesses? Attorney Buting, we do, Your Honor, but I I view this new information as extremely important to all of the witnesses. If we're talking about an actual recordings of communications that are directly at issue here, that is Detective Wigger's testimony and Detective Remaker's uh, testimony about their contacts with the volunteers and all of that. Now, if that's recorded somewhere, the, then that's obviously very important. And it would be really potentially impact how I would question other witnesses if I had that information, which I had requested, but, and apparently it was in the process of being prepared, but had not yet been prepared to us. The court. What I'm wondering is if we can continue taking testimony either on this motion or one of the other motions while people at the Sheriff's Department are getting the recordings together. So perhaps over an hour and a half break for lunch, the parties could listen to the recordings, but not put, a, put us too far behind schedule here today. I understand perfectly before you uh, complete your examination of Detective Remaker, you're going to want to listen to, the, uh, to those recordings. I also acknowledge that it may well play a role in your examination of other witnesses on this particular motion, but I prefer that we not be wasting time with everybody here while everybody here was while somebody at the sheriff's department is compiling uh, the information. I would hope that someone over at the sheriff's department could be instructed to get that together so that it's ready to over the noon noon hour. We can take testimony, either additional testimony on this motion or move on to one of the other motions before the last break. Attorney Buting, uh, let me ask uh, one other uh, question first of Det Detective Remaker. Continuing uh, uh, by Attorney Buting, these phone calls that are recorded that you reviewed, do any of them involve discussions with an individual by the name of Ryan Hillegas? That name is never mentioned. I'm sorry, that name is never mentioned. Or any uh, or any phone conversations with the Hobbach family, no. Or Pamela Sturm. Uh, that's all it is. Uh, is I think two phone calls between myself and Investigator Weirger, and then some radio traffic from myself going out to Davey property. I have it kind of written down word for word. Court reporter couldn't hear. I have it written down almost word for word. That conversation is. Attorney Buting, all right. We could call uh, one other witness then if we could take a break and Detective Remaker be instructed to contact the Sheriff's Department and expedite making copies of those. The court, all right. Is that satisfactory to everyone? Attorney Fallon, that's fine. Detective Remaker, clarify exactly what you want. Attorney Buting, I'm talking about phone conversations as well as radio traffic right up to the point where you say you stopped reviewing it, that is, I think you were looking at the VIN number or something. The witness, uh, there's myself talking about the VIN numbers quickly, and the dispatch contacts me and tells me that there's somebody waiting at the Sheriff's Department. The media shows up at the Sheriff's Department, and that's about where it ended. Attorney Buting, okay, so all that up to that point. After that, if you haven't reviewed that for today, then we'll deal with it later. Detective Remaker, correct. The court, is the is someone at the Sheriff's Department in the process of transferring these conversations? Detective Remaker, we're in the process of, of providing radio, telephone, various types of communications that's recorded uh, to the defense in its original form. The court, all right, why don't I excuse you at this time? You can contact the Sheriff's Department and ask them to get it, get that together. We'll move on to the next witness, okay? And hopefully it will be ready to be reviewed over the noon hour. Witness excused.